Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff, and today we're gonna make a backyard climbing tower. Today we're back at the farm. If you remember here, last fall we made a zip line and we made a big platform in the tree to launch off of to go down that zip line. And that's the first of hopefully many things to play on in this area for my kids and for me. But today we're gonna build a big climbing structure. It's gonna be close to that, so eventually we'll connect them, but today we're just gonna focus on building up the climbing structure. And this is gonna be made out of four by four sticking out of the ground and then wrapped in climbing wall. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Over the weekend, I came out here with an auger and I made four holes to put posts in. And I've got them four feet away from each other over here and eight feet apart on this side. Eventually, I wanna wrap the entire thing in plywood. So we're starting with putting in four posts and then we're gonna build up from that and make the shape change a little bit as we go. But the first thing we have to do is get these posts set in place and make sure that the spacing is four feet and eight feet on the outside. That'll be important later on. First thing we need to do is put a post in the hole I've got these about two feet deep, which depending on your frost line and what you're building, you're gonna have to look up how deep the hole needs to be. In my case, I'm just gonna do two feet. And I'm gonna put it in there and then make sure that it is plumb in both directions. It is going straight up and down, and I'm gonna hold it in that position with some stakes that go out. I'll screw those in, hammer them into the ground so it will stay there. I'm gonna do the same thing on all four of them. And once I get them in their positions, then I'll tie them together so that they will stay. And after that, we'll have to anchor them into the ground. I've got the first one plumb, and it is straight up and down. And the other ones need to be exactly eight feet and four feet away from this corner. That's the outside faces. And so I'm taking an eight foot two by four, and I'm gonna attach it to this one, make sure that it's level that way, and then use the end of this two by four as where the outside of the next post goes. I'm gonna do the same thing in the other direction with four feet. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to have full sheets of plywood that can go onto these surfaces and I can put all the climbing holds on those full sheets. And then up top, we'll have to cut down smaller pieces and make some different shapes and stuff. So a minute ago, I said we should make it four feet and eight feet so that sheets of plywood fit on there. Well, I don't know, I lost something in the layout of the posts. I probably didn't measure from the outside edge on one of them. So basically the holes are a little bit too far apart, which means the sheets that go on this side are gonna have to be a little bit wider than four feet. It's not a big deal, but it's just more expensive, less convenient. Oh well. I was gonna make a point later on in the video, but I'll go ahead and make it. That I was gonna start with a really simple structure and then I hadn't planned past that. So I was gonna kind of make it up as I went so that the, Outside shape was not just a box. It was, you know, had some parts that stuck out and things that came back and make it more interesting to climb on. And because my initial plan didn't quite go like I wanted it to it, I'm basically just starting that process earlier than I was planning. So I was about to say that I need to figure out to make sure, how to make sure that this is 90 degrees from the existing stuff, but it actually doesn't matter. If it's not 90 degrees, it'll probably be more interesting to play on and climb on. So I'm just gonna put it where it is right now, make sure it's straight up and down, and then we'll just make the rest of it fit. So I've got these four up and locked into the ground, locked into each other with just one row around the bottom. There's nothing at the top and it's already pretty sturdy. It will get better as we add more things to it. But I wanted to point out that I've been using decking screws so far just to hold this together. I'm only putting one screw per joint here just to hold it so that we can get the footers poured. And the decking screws will work just fine. They don't have the same shear strength as a structural screw. So some of these will get structural screws put in them. But honestly, this is the sixth climbing wall I've made in my life. And I've used decking screws for almost all of it and they've all held up just fine. It's one of those things that if you're building a house, sure, use the structural stuff. If you're gonna put a lot of weight on it, structural stuff. This is basically just a climbing thing, a play thing. Deck screws will work just fine. 
So the plan is to build walls like you would frame a room, just a framed wall, that fit inside of all of these faces. So we're gonna do the first one right here. I'm gonna use 10 foot two by fours because it's just a big flat wall. So we're gonna make a wall over there, lift it into place, and then screw it into these pieces with those structural screws that I mentioned before. We're gonna do the same thing on all the sides around the bottom, and then that will connect all of the posts together. Once we've got them all connected together, we can take out these supports, we can take out the things we put along the bottom, and then we can fill the holes and the whole thing will be locked together and locked down to the ground. So, let's make a wall. Now for this wall, I'm not doing like 16 on center spacing. I'm really just kinda going around 20 to 24 basically whatever fits the space. This one's 44 inches across, so I just put one center piece. On some of the wider sections, I'll probably lean closer to the 20, 22 inch spacing. It's not like this is a framed wall in a house that has to carry a bunch of load. So it's really about making sure that you've got enough support to hold the plywood, because the plywood is gonna be holding the weight of whoever's climbing. I've got this last beginning wall to put in here, and I went ahead and screwed in right in the center of it, so it kind of has a pivot point. Normally I would just make this one straight up and down, but I realized that I need one way to get up that's a little bit easier than the rest. So off of that pivot point, I think I'm gonna lean it forward a little bit so that someone who's maybe not as good of a climber, not as strong, younger kid, could have an easier time getting up this side. And then it'll have just a really slight incline going in towards it. I think it'll work out better. But the point being is you can take each one of these panels and lean them and make it harder or easier depending on which way it's leaning. Now we have all four of these sides at least kind of tied together. Now I wanted to show you how much movement there is in this still. Okay, this is tied to itself, but not tied to the ground in any way that I can see. And it does have a little bit of movement in it. Now, it's gonna be helped by the fact that there's gonna be plywood on every surface. So it's gonna tie all of these to each other. So that's gonna help a lot. But also, we need to tie it down into the ground. Now we're ready to lock this thing in place, and you could use concrete. You could just pour in a dry bag, let the water of the ground and rainwater, uh, you know, mix it. Or you could pre-mix it and pour it in, or you could use what I'm gonna use, and it's this foam stuff. This is a two-part mixture. You mix it in the bag and then you pour it in and it expands and fills the hole. Now normally I wouldn't expect that this foam would be used for a structure, but the fact that we're using four separate posts that are locked together, they're not gonna be leaning with the wind or anything like that. It's not a fence. And so I wanna give this stuff a shot and see if it works for this case. I don't know if it will or not. You definitely should do the research on a structure that you're building to see if this is a good option for you, but I've used it once before and it worked pretty well, so we're gonna try it again. So we had a little rain delay and it gave me some time to figure out exactly what I want to do here. I went ahead and built another section of wall and put it in here at an angle. So we've got one little area that sticks out some and then past that it's going to go straight up. It's going to go straight up to a floor that we're going to put up there. Basically we're going to build a deck on top of this thing and it is going to be at this level. So the idea is that there's going to be a deck surface running here and then three of the four sides, not this one, are gonna go up past it. So you'll climb over a wall. It'll give you a little bit of kind of protection all the way around, but then you'll have a simple way on this side where you can climb right up like a ladder and just step onto the deck. So for that deck, I need to put another one of these on the opposite side level with it, and then we're gonna use joist hangers here to tie them together and make a deck surface. But come around, let me show you what I'm gonna do over here. You'll notice that this side sticks out a lot further than that side. This is gonna be the difficult side. So we're gonna do a wall from this point down at an angle to meet that surface so it's gonna be a lot of an overhang. 
And then from here, we'll probably just have a short wall that comes up past it. But we need to make this big wall that's gonna set at an angle. I also found the other day some framing screws. Now these are kind of an in-between of decking screws and the big structural screws, uh, but they're made for framing and they're made for indoor outdoor use. So I learned something new. I'm standing up here on this eight foot section, kind of long section, and I feel a little flex, which reminds me that there's nothing underneath the middle of this to stop it from sagging. So over time, you might end up with a sag. I think rather than putting in another post, I'm just gonna get a concrete block and kind of wedge it underneath the very, very bottom to support it and keep it in contact with the ground. Now that I've got those joists in place, we're gonna make the next section of wall and then kind of just attach it to the outside of that joist that I just put up. And now that there's kind of a base for everything to attach to, the rest of it should go pretty quickly. It's just a matter of building more wall sections and screwing them together. So we got this wall completely done. Basically, this is now gonna be the floor, the surface that I'm on right here. So we're gonna put decking across this once it's done. And we're gonna take this wall that we did on this side and duplicate it on that side, but it's gonna be steeper and more difficult. I did wanna point out that this is gonna be a huge box with a really big space inside of it, which would be great for a playhouse or something like that. And I thought about that, but honestly, the inside of this thing is gonna fill up with spiders. So rather than deal with that, we're just gonna wrap it up in plywood let them play on the outside of it. So I changed my mind yet again. I was gonna do basically this all the way across, but I thought it'd be more interesting to actually have some different variations. So I did a center section like I was originally planning, and now I'm gonna do kind of an angled piece that's a compound angle going from here to the post. That means we'll have a little bit of an overhang on the top. And the way to do this, because you have lines going in different planes, is to cut this space into triangles and frame out triangles so that you can have plywood that'll lay across the same plane and be able to screw into all the faces. So basically I'm gonna put a diagonal piece up here in the corner and use that piece as the base for building a triangle here, a triangle there. And really it's just cutting angles and lengths to fit the actual space that you're working in. A few moments later. So this was a little bit more difficult than I expected, but basically I built one triangle here that's flat, that's parallel with the rest of the kind of flat walls. And then I had this one out here and I just had to kind of finagle three pieces to fit in the opening and try to get them on kind of the same plane. Luckily, the plywood will have a little bit of flex, so if it needs to kind of push back or come out with this particular shape, it should be able to. Um, I'm just gonna put one more kind of brace in here to hold the plywood and then do the exact same thing on that side, but way bigger. So we're back here on a very windy day at the farm and I got some six foot decking boards just to throw on top of that surface that we made. So just like any deck, I'm gonna lay these down make sure there's a little space in between them, screw them down, and then we'll have something to stand on so I can trim the trees that are above this thing. Let's talk climbing holds. So the climbing holds are attached to a wall in a couple of different ways. You've got screw on holds that are like this and they have small screw holes in them so that you can just put them anywhere you want on a piece of wood, doesn't matter. Drive in some screws and it's held in place. The other ones are called bolt-on 
and they've got bolt holes in them, if I can find one here, like that. And so they have a bigger hole that uses a stainless steel bolt. That bolt goes into something called a T-nut. Now this T-nut is mounted in the plywood, and so you have to drill a hole for this part to fit into, and then from the back side, you push that in and hammer it in place so these little teeth go into the plywood so it won't spin. And once that's in there, from the back side, you can put the hold on from the front side and then put a bolt in and that'll hold it in place. Now the problem with this is that you need to have places all over the climbing wall for holds, which means you have to drill tons of holes and hammer in tons of these T-nuts. So basically we're gonna start by getting the plywood on the wall, figure out where we want all those holes to be, and then we'll have to drill them. So as I was taking stuff out of this box, these are Metolius holds, and I just got them on Amazon because I know the brand. But this actually comes with a cool book that talks about design and construction for climbing walls. And it gives you a bunch of stuff that you can do inside of a room. Obviously ours is outside, so it's a little bit different. But the framing is the same and probably gives you a lot of stuff that you would need to know. So if you're gonna buy some holds, look for a book like that. So I think what I'm gonna do is take these bottom big flat sections and just put a piece of plywood up and then put in just enough screws to hold it in place cut it off on the ends, you know, get it fit. And then while it's up there from the backside, I can mark where the holes need to be to make sure that they don't run into the framing that's behind them. So I'll go back there and mark the holes. I guess I could even drill the holes, but to hammer in the T-nuts, doing it in place would be bad. It would be hard. The whole thing's gonna bounce and everything. So you wanna lay it down on its face, then drop in all the T-nuts and hit them with a the hammer from the backside. I've got to figure out how to get this triangle, which is not very precise anyway, onto a piece of plywood so I can cut it out. And so I'm gonna use a digital protractor here and try to get some angles and then I'll measure the known sides that I can measure and try to transfer them down. But this thing will help me just kind of get a rough angle. I can lock it in and then use that to transfer that to the wood. I mean, I don't want to say that's perfect, but it's kind of perfect. Okay, so I've got this piece in place, and for a small sheet like this, going on the back side of it and marking or even drilling the holes is perfectly fine. It's easy to do with it in place. The big sheets, you probably want them to be on more of a grid, and so using a chalk line to lay out a grid and then just make sure that those holes don't hit the framing behind is a much easier thing to do. You can take it off the wall and do all that work while it's laid down flat. But for this one, I'm just gonna go on the backside and drill a bunch of varied holes, not really follow a pattern. So, that is one small section, and it takes a long time to do, but we have to do the entire thing all the way around. We have to drill tons of holes, so I'm gonna save you from having to watch that, and I'll just show it to you when we're done. This thing turned out to be a lot of fun to do, and of course, the more time you spend planning and preparing and measuring and all that stuff, the more precise it's gonna look, but for something like this, it doesn't matter. And you know me, I like to figure it out as I go along, and that worked perfectly in this case. Now, one of the bad things about building a climbing wall is that climbing holds are actually pretty expensive, and if you buy a box of 50, they do not go as far as you think. So you're probably gonna need more than you think you're gonna need, but luckily, we've got a video about making your own climbing holds. You'll notice that I did not finish this section. That's because I'm gonna connect it to the other platform, but I'm not quite sure how yet. So if you've got some ideas, leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching this one. Be sure to go over and check out the climbing hole video. We'll see you next time.
Eventually, we're gonna connect this to the, dang it, I was, I couldn't think of what it's called. Over the weekend, I came out here with an auger and I dug, I almost said, I just keep wanting to say drilled. I drilled holes. Kinda did. Done. So basically, you just climb up it. <laughs> <laughs> well, farts.